In a previous video, I mentioned to you guys some hidden features that are on the touchscreen display on the Subaru Outback. So this is mainly going to pertain to any 2020 or newer Outback, the Legacy, the new WRX, and the 2023 Subaru Ascent because they all share the same touchscreen display. If you're new to my channel, my name is Alex. I like to share weekly videos all on Subaru related topics. So if you enjoy those types of videos, then click on the subscribe button down below. And if you guys learn something new and get value out of this video, please be sure to click the like button. These are just some of the things that I personally have found that are not directly apparent, some things that are slightly hidden for the newer Outback model. So if you own an Outback or you're familiar with them and you yourself have found some hidden features within this display or anything about the car and you want to share that with other people, then leave a comment down below and, and share that with other people who might like to know. The first hidden feature I want to show you guys is the ability to move these apps around and change the location of those to, to meet your own personal preferences. So for example, let's say I wanna move this My Subaru app over here, I can do that. Just click and hold the app, you get into this edit mode right here and you can move that around. And once you get the apps in the locations that you want them, you just click the home button and that will adjust it and save that setting. So even when you restart the car and you turn it back on with the push button start here, that will stay in the same location that you already set. Another hidden feature that is not always apparent is that this screen scrolls over. So there are additional apps on this second screen here. Now these may not be apps that you use often. However, one that you, once you learn the feature and you might like to use often is auto vehicle hold. This is the feature that when turned on like this, lights up over here telling you AVH is on. When you come to a complete stop, you can let your foot off the brake and the vehicle holds in place. So it's really helpful in traffic whenever you wanna be able to release your foot. If you wanna put this on the home screen, which is what I actually have done on my car, I'll move this over, you just slide it over like that, drop it there and click the home button and that saves it there. So each time I get in the car, I can turn that on because this unfortunately is a feature that defaults off each time you restart the car. So instead of having to swipe over here to access that, I can get to it quickly right there. If we slide back over here to this second screen, we'll see there's a display off option. Now you can turn the display off by clicking this or you can actually just click and hold this volume button right here and that will turn your display off. There's a couple benefits to this. One is being able to turn the display off when you're traveling at night and you're not blinding the passengers if they're trying to rest. But even with this off, you can still use your climate controls here. So you can adjust your fan speed, you can turn your climate control on and off. You can even turn on and off your heated seats. And to turn this back on, you can click and hold this or you can just click the home button and it turns your display right back on. This next one is a hidden feature that I actually didn't know about until one of you guys commented on my last video recently telling me about it. And that is with your heated seat controls. So instead of, say I wanna turn my heated seat control off completely, right now it's on high. So you have high, medium, low, and off. So whenever it's on high, I thought you had to triple click here or click it multiple times to turn it off, but you don't actually have to do that. On any setting here, you can just click and hold, release, and it shuts it off. So you don't have to tap it multiple times. And also if it's on medium, you click and hold, release, and it shuts it off. So that's also a really nice quick way to turn on and off your heated seat controls. Since I brought up this large display and it potentially blinding passengers or even maybe yourself while you're driving, you can adjust the brightness with this little scroll over here. So you'll see as I scroll it, this gets brighter and that's all the way full brightness. When the dot, the two dots down here are lined up, that is full brightness and whenever you go down just one that will or any of these down here it will dim it but it will auto dim based on the exterior lighting so i always keep it usually right about there so it will auto dim in the top display here you have three widgets that's what they call these up here right now it's displaying the oil temperature the water temp and the average speed but say you want to show something else and you want that information to display there. Again, we go into our settings and we look for the, uh, the widgets. So favorite widgets here. Go ahead and click on that. 
you want to select the one that you want to change and then tap down here. So we're going to click. I don't really care too much for the average speed. I'd rather display something like weather or the calendar. So we're going to click on that. And so now, whenever I go back to the main screen, you'll see here that it displays my oil temp, my coolant temperature, and my, oh, didn't mean to click on time, and the calendar. So that's how easy it is to change that information up there. Here's a quick hidden feature that not a lot of people know about either, and that is the ability to change this AC button down here to display something else. So you can actually use this to have another quick setting. And the way you do that is you go in here to settings, you scroll down to where it says climate control, click on customize climate control button, and you can change this to display max AC. So you see it changes down here, auto, recirculation, or sink. AC, that just changes the, it's the dehumidifier. So if you still have that on, it's you can still blow warm air, it just dehumidifies the air. Max AC turns on full blast air conditioning, so cold air as well as uh, high fan speed. Auto is going to adjust the fan speed here based on the temperature that you select on either the side here or if you click in here and adjust it. Recirculation is going to recirculate the cabin air, so you're not pulling air from the outside, so it's a little bit uh, easier on your, your uh, AC compressor and then sync. That is going to sync up these two uh, climate controls. So the driver and the passenger, for example, if we're, you know, if I change this over here, oh wait, let's do it on the passenger side. So I change it over here on the passenger side and then I click sync. It syncs those two together. So I'm actually going to leave it on sync right now. This next one isn't really a hidden feature, but you'd be surprised at how many people I ask about this and they either have never used it or they don't understand the value in it and that is your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. We have iPhones, so I've got Chelsea's phone connected right now. If you wanna know how to connect your phone, you can simply do so by plugging into this USB input down here on the 2020 through 2022 models, or for the new 23 models, it's wireless. I've also got a video on the Apple CarPlay more in depth. You can click up to the top right if you wanna find out more about it. But the main benefit to this is that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto really opens up the capabilities of your touchscreen display and makes this a much more user-friendly display as well because we have iPhone, we're used to iPhone, so this is going to mirror much like what an iPhone or a tablet looks like. If you have Android Auto, it's gonna look more like your Android device, but this allows you to listen to Spotify, Pandora. You can use navigation apps like Waze or Google Maps if you receive text messages, it doesn't display the text on the screen, but it will read it through the speakers of the car and you can respond through voice without picking up your phone. And you can make and receive phone calls as well as listen to audiobooks or podcasts. So there's a ton of different things you can do on this that make it very valuable and very easy to use and are, in my opinion, much better than using your traditional Bluetooth connection. I've been asked about this a lot more recently and that is valet mode. If you click on this, it pulls up this screen here. You can put in a pin code and make sure you put in a pin code that you can remember easily and that is hopefully secure. If we click on okay, this locks out anybody from being able to access personal data or information on your screen. So it grays out pretty much the bulk of the apps. Now they do still have access to your climate control because hopefully you would still give somebody who's valeting your car access to that, as well as the auto start stop function that saves fuel and your vehicle settings. So they would still have access to that stuff, but they wouldn't have access to any of your personal information. And the other cool thing about this is if you turn the car off, I'm gonna open the door here so that screen shuts off. And if we turn it right back on, you'll see that the valet mode is still active. So even if the car is turned off and turned back on, it's still locked out as it should be until you get back into the car. You can gain access by clicking this and punching in your pin code again. I personally have never valeted my car, but it is cool that I do have features like that on my car. If I ever wanna get fancy, go to a nice hotel and 
having having somebody else park my car so anyways hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please be sure to click the like button as i mentioned earlier on in this video if you guys have any secrets or hidden tips or things that you've learned about your car feel free to share those with others and myself down in the comment section below i hope you guys have a great day and i will see you in the next one